frustrated over the failures on the Afghan war front, U.S. President Donald Trump has suggested the sacking of General John Nicholson, the commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan. In a recent meeting on the war in Afghanistan, President Donald Trump told Defense Secretary James Mattis to fire General Nicholson for not winning the 16-year-old Afghan war. President Trump, during his stormy meeting with generals and senior officials, cast doubt on the U.S. strategy in Afghanistan. He reportedly said, quote, We've been there now for close to 17 years, and I want to find out why we've been there for 17 years and how it's going and what we should do in terms of ideas. I've heard of plenty of ideas from a lot of people, but I want to hear it from the people on the ground. Upset over losing the war, officials claim that Trump even argued that the U.S. should demand a share of Afghanistan's estimated $1 trillion in mineral wealth in exchange for its assistance to the Afghan government. Another meeting of aides is expected to meet today to discuss the situation in Afghanistan. The meeting comes just a day after the two the country lost two of its soldiers during, during an ISIS attack at a NATO convoy in the Kandahar province. Two U.S. soldiers were hurt a few days ago when their helicopter was attacked in the same area. Let's go straight to our correspondent, Daniele Pagani, who's joining us live from the Weon newsroom. Daniele, you were on the ground in Kabul not too long ago. What do we expect in terms of Trump's latest comments when it comes to the Afghan war? Well, unfortunately, uh, it uh, is very clear that uh, the Trump administration does not have any plan when it comes to Afghanistan. The only thing that President Donald Trump is capable of doing right now is trying to find someone who is to be held, according to him, responsible for the failure of the Afghan war. And I must say that this man is definitely not General John Nicholson. He inherited a situation which was already very much problematic. The United States forces have been on the ground in Afghanistan fighting and helping the Afghan national forces to establish their presence in the country for 17 years. So General John Nicholson reached Afghanistan in March 2016. So it is pretty evident that what is going on right now is obviously not General John Nicholson's fault. Also, we have to point out that perhaps there is no one who knows Afghanistan as good as General John Nicholson himself because he has fought on the ground as a soldier, boots on the ground in Afghanistan, in the eastern mountainous part of Afghanistan. So what comes out of this new uh, last uh, comment from Donald Trump is, once again, the absence of a clear strategy in Afghanistan. Daniela, you're also there on the ground. What is the situation like there for the people? I mean, you, I understand the security is tough. It is also hard for journalists there covering the region. How is it there for the people of Afghanistan? How have things perhaps changed over the last decade or so since U.S. forces moved in? Well, the security situation is uh, plummeting uh, more or less day by day. The Taliban forces uh, do control nearly half of the country, which is not a small detail. It's half of the country, half of the provinces. Uh, the presence of the Islamic State doesn't make things easier because the Islamic State is pushing the country towards a sectarian war between the Sunni population and the Shia population, which is something that the Taliban did not do, or at least did not do extensively. Uh, Kabul itself, uh, which was a sort of a safe bubble, we can say, in the last years, has become very, very dangerous. It's uh, the risk of it being kidnapped, getting kidnapped, not only for foreigners, but also for locals, uh, is very high. And also, suicide attacks are happening every week. So the government is not, in this moment, not, I would say, on the winning side, neither on the losing side, but they are fighting every day and every day all around the front lines of Afghanistan. There are losses among the national, the Afghan National Army and the American troops. And lastly, uh, Daniela, you know, when we uh, talk about Donald Trump and his experience when it comes to foreign policy, perhaps limited compared to Obama and previous U.S. presidents, how will this perhaps impact the United States moving forward with its uh, foreign policy, specifically Afghanistan? Well, Afghanistan has always been one of the major 
uh, I would say, element, uh, at least in the last 15 years of American policy, whoever could find out a good strategy to secure the United States presence in Afghanistan had gathered a lot of support within the military. Now, Donald Trump left to the military a lot of the decisions regarding the theaters of war, and this is a sort of, a, I would say, a sort of a double game, politically very clever, because in case they win, he can claim that he was the one behind the victory because he left them independence in case they lose. He can sort of de-responsabilize himself, saying that, look, it was the military's um, objective to win and they weren't capable of. So we will still see there is no clear policy of Afghanistan and this on the ground is clearly reflecting. So as long as there is no clarity, it's hard for all of us to analyze the effect that it will have on American policies. Certainly, if you lose, if you keep losing American lives in Afghanistan and if your only strategy is sending more troops, this is not going to gather consensus among the American people. All right, Daniele Pagani, getting us the very latest on the Afghan situation there. Daniele, thank you.